Sixers fans, as you guys know if you watch my channel at all, annually, I mean every single year, my issue with the Sixers has always been the lack of depth. It's been the problem with the bench. It's been the inconsistencies of when Doc Rivers inexplainably plays a five bench unit because we've never really been that good on the side of the court. This year has been entirely different. I mean, 180 degree twist. The Sixers, probably the Sixers strongest suit with them right now is the fact that they are deep. They're one of the deepest teams in the NBA. Their bench is one of the best bench units in the entire NBA. They've had two games in a row with 40 bench points now. And I want to sit here today and tell you about the difference of this year and the prior years of the Sixers bench and why it works so well. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Guys, I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. I'll drop merch. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cheap. I'm broke, so I'm figuring the rest of the world is broke. We might as well all help each other a little bit. Like the video, guys. Let's get into it. No intro today. No music. Let's talk Sixers. I will be streaming tonight, so make sure to, to stop by the stream. It's always fun. If you guess the score correctly before the game starts, I will send you for free, free 99, a process Sixers jersey. So what better way to, to show off to your friends than like a Tony Roten jersey or, a, or an Alexi Shved jersey? That's a good one. That's a name. Sergio Rodriguez, that's another one. All right, let's talk Sixers bench. And I think by talking Sixers bench, the first thing I have to bring up is, of course, Andre Drummond. I just, I mean, he just put up a performance against the Portland Trailblazers that hasn't been done since Hakeem Olajuwon in 1990. That's ridiculous. The guy had 14 points, I think it was 15 rebounds, seven assists, five steals, and no turnovers. Are you kidding me, dude? I, di I didn't know we signed Luka Doncic. Love that man right now. Andre Drummond, before the season starts, bet bets on himself. You know, understandably so. I mean, he probably sees himself as a guy who can make Jared Allen money, and Jared Allen just made $100 million. That's in Andre Drummond's mind, probably where he uh, puts himself in the modern NBA. He's a 28-year-old, three-time rebound champ guy. But the problem with Andre Drummond is he's just not really worth that money. And I think he recognized that. So what he did this year was he took on a, a Dennis Schroeder type of mentality. He bet on himself. Except it's going to work, unlike Schroeder, because that's not going to work at all. It, I mean, it didn't work. The guy lost $64 million. Anyway, beside the point, Andre Drummond decides to take a veteran minimum contract for the Philadelphia 76ers, in which this year, outside of the Lakers season, is going to be the first season that he's going to officially not be a starter. And thinking about that, it is a wonderful move on both parties in every sense of the way. I've always said this, in order to win in the NBA, you must have a star. You have to have a star, probably more than one nowadays, that's making max money. That's the way it is. So in order to achieve a championship, you need to have those guys play. They need to be around, they need to be healthy, they need to be playing. But more importantly, you need to surround that guy around people who are, are just going to be very good. But it's very difficult because you don't have as much money as salary cap. So you need to find guys who are going to play better than their market value. Andre Drummond is making $2 million. The way he's playing this year is a $10 million man. That is how you win in the NBA. You win in the NBA by maximizing value. It's a marketing 101 or business 101. I don't know. I wasn't very smart in college. But it's about getting a guy who is going to overperform his contract. And that's exactly what Andre Drummond's doing. That's exactly what the Sixers bench is doing. That's exactly why the Sixers are 5-2 and two right now. There's no reason that ever before this Sixers team would have beaten anybody, especially a team led by Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, without Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, or Tobias Harris. There's no way. I mean, you guys know the records of the Sixers without Embiid in prior seasons. We would have never won a game like that. And that's why this year's team is just different. It's just different. And it's different for so many great reasons. And one of the, the biggest reasons is the bench. Andre Drummond is averaging around seven points a game this year, 10 rebounds, and almost three assists a night. That's extremely impressive, given the fact that he's been under 20 minutes a night this year. I think he's averaging 18.8 minutes a night this year, and he's doing that stat line on that. Like That's, that's really, really impressive. And I think the most impressive thing here, guys, is the fact that Andre Drummond is shooting 88% from the free throw line. 88%. 
Now I know it's a small sample size and a lot of you guys are gonna be like, he hasn't shot that many free throws, but he kinda has. It's not like he has four free throw attempts this year. The dude kinda gets to the line every single game, 88%. This dude was the Dwight Howard range for his entire career and all of a sudden this year, he's shooting 30% better than he ever has in any other season. Now, am I gonna sit here and say it's gonna be sustainable? Probably not, but 88% in this short of a sample size is still a very, very good sign. Do you guys think Ben Simmons would come out and shoot 88% from the field on the just as many attempts in a five game, seven game span? No, of course not. That's, of course not. We're not ridiculous. We don't have any expectations for that man anymore because he's nothing. He's nothing to us. Um, <laughs> at the same time, he's averaging two steals and a block. And so Andre Drummond, I, the one thing I noticed, honestly, right from the jump this year is his defense out of the pick and roll is better than I've ever seen him. I've never been an Andre Drummond fan, and it's not because I think he's overrated. It's because defensively, he's brought nothing. What I love so much about Dwight Howard is that he is just a defensive presence. And my thing with Andre Drummond was I thought it was an upgrade, but at the same time, I just didn't think he was going to be able to hold down the fort and then beat out on the defensive side. And he has absolutely proven me wrong. I mean, I'm six minutes in and I've only talked about Andre Drummond. That is how much I have nice to say about him. Which leads me to, of course, my man, George Niang. George Niang, from the day we signed him, I was immediately on the fan, fan board, fan train. I don't know. For the last three seasons in his career, he shot over 40% from three, which is absolutely fantastic. I don't have to be the one to tell you that. Uh, you know that. Um, the only thing stopping me from really loving the guy was that he was on the Jazz, and I cannot stand the Jazz. But George Niang is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. He just had a game against Portland where he had 21-5-5. Five and, five. and what I absolutely love most about George Niang is the fact that he does every single thing we wanted out of Mike Scott that we just didn't get. This man knocks down his open threes every single time. I mean, if not every single time, it's at over a 40% clip. That's extremely impressive. George Niang is averaging 43% from three this year. And what is so impressive about him is that he is so much more than just a spot up shooter, which as much as I've seen him play since he's been in college, he never really had. I mean, now he can genuinely play make and as a stretch four, even five that we saw against Portland a couple nights ago, George Niang really seems to be a guy who you can kind of trust like constantly on the offensive end. You know he's never going to do too much. One thing about Mike Scott is that man did too much always. And, and when he wasn't doing too much, he was just playing 20 minutes of a 0, zero, zero stat line because he would just hide in the corner and occasionally shoot the ball off the, off the side of the backboard. Niang is not that. Niang is a very, very high IQ player. He always has been, and that is what is most impressive about him. He's averaging double digit points this year. He is just playing fantastic, fantastic basketball. The Sixers bench looks incredible. Um, Matisse Thibel. Now, Matisse is one of the most likable people in the world. I love this guy's vlogs. I love the way he plays basketball, and I genuinely sit here and tell you if you give him over 20 minutes a night, he's a defensive player of the year candidate. And I know he was last year because he got a vote for it, but this year, I don't see why he can't be a top three guy. Matisse Thibel is literally unbelievable. I mean, he is a generational defender. What we see him do on a nightly basis is not normal. It's not, it is not normal. And I think at times we take it for granted because it's so easy to, because he does every single day. But he's one of the players I watch and I just, I, I, I honestly, I admire watching him play basketball because he is so goddamn good on defense. The dude's putting up, let's see, two and a half steals and one and a half blocks this year as a two, a two guard, as a small forward on 22 minutes a night. Matisse Thibel is un, unreal. And, you know, just to, just to throw it out there, he's shooting 25% from three. Not great. You know, it's not great. It's probably a reason as to why he's only averaging five points a game. But the fact that, you know, he's been putting him up at least a little bit more than he used to, I will accept that. But we need Matisse to shoot 30, 33% from three. I mean, that's all we need. And that's all he needs to be able to be a genuine starter on this team. And if Matisse Dybul is a starter on any team in the NBA, he's the defensive player of the year. I'll, I'll stand by that. I really will stand by that. I think he's the best defensive player I've ever seen in my life. And I watched Ben Simmons, and I know our thoughts on that man, but Ben Simmons is, is a seriously good defender. But I, I genuinely believe Matisse is the best defender I've ever watched in my life. Um, 
All right, okay, okay, this is gonna be a funny one. Furk on Corkmoss, of course, dude. Um, I, I saw a stat yesterday on Twitter. This is offhand, but it was like he shoots 36 or 37 percent from three in the first three quarters of the last like couple years, and he shoots 44 percent from three on like 112 attempts. Uh, it might have been more than that uh, in the fourth quarter. Sorry, and that's Furkan. I've learned to appreciate his game. I don't like Furkan Korkmaz, and part of that is because of my ego of just refusing to be like, yeah, I like him. But it's part of me, it's because he still does a lot of the same problems that he's always done, but this year is his best year. And I'm not even going to talk about the negatives on Furkan, because this is a positive video, and, and Furkan Korkmaz has been nothing short of spectacular for us. He's been extremely consistent, he's been better off the dribble than I've ever seen him. His assist rate is up. He's averaging three and a half assists a night on 11 points a game, which is extremely impressive on 21 minutes. He's shooting 43% from the field and you know 35% from three, which isn't great, but I know his volume is way up there. So I can understand that little drop off there, the, the three point line. My, still, my thing is still, he's just really not a complete knockdown shooter. I think he's really, really streaky, but you know, I think every team needs a guy like that. And Furkan is a dude who is fourth quarter Furk. I mean, he has been really, really big for us all season long in the fourth quarter, and he's kind of always been. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that he steps up and is not afraid to shoot that big shot. And sometimes it doesn't go in, sometimes it does, but I always appreciate the guys who put the shot up, you know? So kudos to you, Furk. Keep on working, dude. The whole country of Turkey, this is my peace offering to you because I know I get a lot of comments, a lot of comments. So, hey, um, which leads me to kind of the last guy in this, this backup rotation. And it's kind of the, the, the spot where it's going to be interchangeable. But now that Shake Milton is back, it seems to be Shake's position. Shake has been this backup point guard that we needed, really, really needed. I was about to say that we didn't know we need, but no, we needed. We knew we needed this. Um, Shake has been iffy. I am the biggest Shake supporter in the world. I love Shake Milton's game, but he's he he's coming off of an injury, so I think we have to give him that. But also the fact that he really seems to give this bench unit another big component, another really big factor as to why it's so good. I mean, the Sixers are 10 guys deep, really, really deep. And I think Isaiah Joe is even that 11th guy you can roll off and he can cook. I mean, when he starts like heating up, it's 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 over. Isaiah Joe is limitless range and he's a guy who I think is very close to being ready. And it's unfortunate that he hasn't been able to carve out a spot this year, given how great he was in the preseason. But I still think Isaiah Joe has chances to be a very, very good dude for this team in the future. But Shake Milton, you know, he's putting up over 11 points a game on three and a half assists over two rebounds, which is great numbers, you know, great numbers in a smaller sample size, given the fact that he was hurt, but he's still putting up around 20 minutes a night. The only thing, um, that I don't love is his shot this year. It just is not falling and it's not a pretty shot. So like you hate to see that, you really do. He's shooting like Matisse Thibel range from three right now. I know it's been a much higher volume, but it's really not looking good. He's short on like every single shot. Maybe it's just his legs aren't under him yet, you know? He is coming off of an injury and it's it's hard to just get back to the NBA speed of the game, but you would imagine Shake needs to shoot the ball better for him to take his game to the next level because the way Shake Milton drives the lane and can really kind of take over games sometimes when we need him is extremely important to the Sixers' success. His mid-range game is really, really good and I love the way he kind of facilitates around the rim and gets to the rim and uses his craftiness and his ability to just score tough buckets. That's what Shake has always done. We know the type of performances Shake can put out. I mean, Doc Rivers literally plays this guy because of two years ago, Shake Milton had 39 points on Doc Rivers. And I just feel like Doc has never forgotten about that, which is cool because I love Shake. So give the guy minutes, but <laughs> that's really kind of what Shake Milton's like. Shake Milton is a dude who we know has it in him. He just needs to to him just find a way to, 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 to captivate it and just bring it out of him. I don't know if I said the right word, but that the Sixers bench is as good as possible this year. The Sixers have the number one rated offense, you know, the number one rated half court offense, the, one of the best three point shooting teams in the NBA. And a lot of that is because of the lack of Ben Simmons, obviously. But at the same time, a lot of it is because George Niang, Korkmaz, guys like coming off the bench, just shooting really, really well, just playing really good basketball. I mean, the fact that George Niang 
I really can't put into words how impactful that signing is. On a two-year deal, he's making like, what, $5 million? And he is way better than Mike Scott ever was, strictly from the shooting perspective. But Niang does so much more than that. And he really embodies what this bench is. It's guys who are just playing way better than people expected them to. And I'm, I'm here for that narrative, man. I'm here for the narrative of the Sixers right now. We are sneaky, sneaky good. Five and two looks good. Tonight's going to be a really, really big game, though, against Chicago. But we're going to be fresh as shit in these new city jerseys. So come out. Make sure you come out and support the stream. We'll watch it together. We'll, we'll, we'll chat it up. We'll talk sports. We'll talk this. We'll talk that. Peace out, guys. I love you.